Welcome to Astronomy Daily, the podcast, your guide to the cosmos and all its wonders. I'm Anna, your host, bringing the universe a little closer to you with each episode. In today's galactic journey, we're venturing into a realm where historic rockets take their final bow and the search for extraterrestrial life takes fascinating new turns. We're following the trailblazing path of ULA's Delta IV Heavy as it completes its mission for the stars, investigating habitable worlds that orbit not one, but two suns, and pondering discoveries that challenge our imaginations. Hold tight as we embark on this cosmic exploration and unfold the secrets of the universe, one star at a time. The Astronomy Daily Podcast. The skies above Cape Canaveral bore witness to the thunderous ascent and fiery farewell of the mighty Delta IV heavy rocket on Tuesday, marking a poignant conclusion to six decades of storied launches. United Launch Alliance's venerable workhorse roared to life for its 16th and final mission, ferrying the classified NRO-70 payload on behalf of the U.S. National Reconnaissance Office. It was a sight to behold, the Delta IV Heavy, a leviathan of spaceflight, setting itself ablaze in a spectacular hydrogen-fueled inferno before gracefully ascending to the heavens. This final sortie was a momentous occasion, not just for ULA, but for the wider aerospace community. Tori Bruno, the CEO of ULA, encapsulated the sentiment, describing the rocket as an amazing piece of technology, 23 stories tall, half a million gallons of propellant, two and a quarter million pounds of thrust. Indeed, there was something almost sentient in the way the Delta IV Heavy consumed its insulation in the throes of launch, reminiscent of a phoenix immolating itself to be reborn. As the iconic orange and white boosters separated, and the single RL-10C21 engine on the second stage ignited, pushing NRO-70 into the secrecy of orbit, we likewise turned a page, transitioning onward from Delta's legacy to the dawn of ULA's next-generation launch vehicle. Vulcan has been conceived as a vessel for the future, built to encapsulate the collective learnings and triumphs of both the Delta and Atlas families. This final performance of the Delta IV Heavy was, as Bruno aptly noted, a great mission to think about that transition, it is this cyclical nature of innovation and legacy that propels us forward in space exploration. As we reflect on the profound history of the Delta rocket family, with its hundreds of launches dating back to 1960, we eagerly await the new era slated to begin with Vulcan, a rocket designed for the energy demands and security missions central to ULA's future flights. This is not merely the end. It is an occasion to honor the indelible imprint left by the Delta IV Heavy. As we bid adieu to the flame-trenched champion of our skies, we look to the horizon, where the maiden voyage of Vulcan awaits, and with it, the promise of furthering humanity's reach into the cosmos. Imagine twin sunsets on the horizon and a sky illuminated by the gentle dance of two stars, an iconic image that has captured the imaginations of Star Wars fans worldwide. But today's news might just blur the line between the science fiction of Tatooine and reality. Researchers at Yale University have lit up the scientific community with their revelations about binary star systems, suggesting that these cosmological duos might just be fostering planets more suitable for life than we had previously believed. In a study that could reshape our search for life in the cosmos, it seems that orderly alignment within these systems is more common than the chaos of misaligned orbits. This alignment with planets gracefully circling their host star while a companion star mirrors this orbital dance could be the harbinger of stable climates on distant worlds. It offers not only the potential for sustained life, but also a diversification of when and where life could thrive, unencumbered by the harsh conditions previously associated with such binary systems. So what might life be like on these temperate Tatooines? One might envisage a planet where the transition from day to night stretches across vast, uninterrupted seasons, where the light of dusk never quite fades, as one star sets only for its companion to rise. We may envision gentle seas and moderate climates, free from the stellar havoc once thought typical of twin sun systems. While these findings point to a universe that may favor order over chaos, they also represent a beacon of hope for those who watch the stars and wonder if, Amidst the unfathomable vastness of space, other forms of life might be gazing back from their own temperate Tatooine across the sea of stars that connect our fates in this cosmic expanse. 
After 37 years soaring the skies in the name of science, NASA's venerable DC-8 aircraft has made its final descent, completing its last mission with a standing ovation from the sky itself, a traditional water salute by the U.S. Air Force Plant 42 Fire Department. This airborne marvel has been the world's largest flying laboratory, embarking on a multitude of airborne science missions that have immensely contributed to our understanding of Earth and the atmosphere. Marking the end of an era, the DC-8 wrapped up its extensive career with the Airborne and Satellite Investigation of Asian Air Quality, or Asia-AQ mission, contributing vital data to the study of our planet's air quality. As it taxis down the runway for the last time, the DC-8 is not destined for obscurity. Instead, it's set for a second life at Idaho State University, taking on a new role in the Aircraft Maintenance Technology Program. Its invaluable contribution will continue as it trains the next generation of aircraft technicians, providing hands-on experience. It's a fitting tribute to an aircraft that has dedicated its existence to expanding horizons, and now, in retirement, will still be helping to elevate human potential. The Astronomy Daily Podcast. In yet another twist in the saga of space exploration, an issue with the pressurizing system of the oxidizer tank led to a last-minute abort of the Angara A5 rocket's test launch from Russia's Vostokny Cosmodrome. This is notable not merely as a setback, but as a critical juncture for Russia's spacefaring aspirations. For the Angara A5 represents the dawn of a new era. It is the first heavy booster rocket developed post-Soviet Union and holds the promise of deploying crucial modules for Russia's anticipated space station alongside satellites for the GLONASS navigation system, with the count stopped mere minutes before the anticipated launch and the loudspeakers announcing a 24-hour delay, we're reminded of the complexities and challenges that space agencies face in their quest toward the stars. This particular instance carries the weight of strategic significance. The success of the Angara A5 is seen as a key to fortifying Russia's position in the global space race. Given its location, the Vostokny Cosmodrome offers an advantageous position closer to the equator, which in theory allows the rocket to deliver a heavier payload. The stakes are high for Russia's space program, especially considering past misadventures, such as the failed moon mission last August, that have to be contended with poignant victories like the recent Soyuz missions to the International Space Station. As the world watched the unfolding drama of the Angara A5, questions linger on the resilience and adaptability of Russia's space endeavors. Will this obstacle be just a bump in the road leading to the cosmos, or does it signify a deeper technological and administrative recalibration within Roscosmos? These are questions that, for now, we can only ponder as we watch and wait for what comes next in the chapter of space exploration. The quest to answer whether humanity stands alone as an advanced civilization in the vast expanse of the cosmos continually propels our scientific inquiries. Today, an enlightening study beckons us to consider the possibility that we indeed might have cosmic neighbors. Balaz Bredak of Kobe University in Japan has added a new dimension to this quest by narrowing down the potential homes of other advanced societies. Using an approach, simple yet profound, Dr. Bradak has identified seven exoplanets from the meandering list of thousands that might hold the key to unlocking the ultimate enigma of our solitude in space. These aren't just random selections from the cosmic lottery, but are the culmination of well-thought-out criteria. To be considered a cradle for complex life, these worlds need to possess certain features, a hospitable climate and an ocean, just as Earth does. Size-wise, we're talking about terrestrial and super-Earth exoplanets situated comfortably within the habitable zones of their stars, locations where liquid water could exist and where life as we know it might flourish. But that's not all. To account for the time it would take a civilization to evolve to the point of seeding life through panspermia intentionally, these planets must be much older, approximately 9.2 billion years at a minimum. After subtracting improbable candidates and factoring in every essential— the result is a concise list of seven potential hotspots for sophisticated alien societies. Among these is the front runner, Kepler, 452b, orbiting a star similar to our own sun, at a distance that feels almost next door by cosmic standards, a mere 1,400 light years away. If Bradak's speculation holds any drop of the cosmic ocean, then systems like Kepler 452b 
could very well emerge as the focus of future exoplanetary surveys, deepening our understanding and perhaps one day leading to a monumental discovery. So while we comb through interstellar signals and peer through telescopic lenses, this study reignites the enduring conjecture. Are we alone? Or could it be that within these seven distant worlds, there resides a spark of life, an echo of civilization calling across the void as curious of us as we are of them? Only time and relentless pursuit of knowledge will tell. As we draw this episode to a close, let us take a moment to look upwards and ponder the vast mysteries of the cosmos we've traversed today. If you've enjoyed this journey through space and time, I encourage you to continue the adventure with us online. Connect with us on X at Astro Daily Pod, where we share the latest updates in the universe and ignite discussions with fellow astronomy enthusiasts. Don't forget to navigate your way to astronomydaily.io to access a universe of episodes and browse the constellation of news we curate for curious minds like yours. And for those who wish to have the cosmos delivered directly to their digital doorstep, sign up for our free newsletter. It's your daily space news bulletin, ensuring that you never miss out on a cosmic story. Until next time, this is Astronomy Daily, the podcast, your beacon in the cosmic ocean. Clear skies and see you beyond the stars. This is your host, Anna, saying bye-bye. The Astronomy Daily Podcast.